Hi guys. I fish a local river for smallmouth. It's full of sunken trees and I have lost a few anchors over the years due to snags. Later I used a stakeout pole, either through the scuppers in the back of the kayak or with an anchor trolley. But the kayak would come to rest in the current at an odd angle. I love the idea of the power pole anchor, but the full-size version is too heavy and way too expensive. The smaller version is too tall and also too expensive. So I designed a retractable anchor pole that I built for $100 and deploys manually. Let's take a look. I motor down to a new location, shut off the motor, and deploy the anchor pole. It's kind of a one-man drift boat. After fishing that spot, I retract it and move on. So you may be saying to yourself, well, how well does it work? I can tell you, it works great. No more hauling aboard an anchor, no more losing anchors to snags in the river, no more handling a long stakeout pole or an anchor trolley. I drop the pole, fish, lift the pole, and move to the next spot. I spend more time fishing and less time messing around with anchoring. And it's quieter too. If you find the wind or current pushing your boat around while you're moving to a new location, you can drop the pole a foot into the water and let it drag. It will act a little like a drift sock or a keel and straighten the boat out. When I retract the pole, the handle is offset to the side a bit. This has an unexpected benefit. It adds tension to the joints. This allows it to hold its position when it is lifted up, but it is not fully in the upright position. This saves time when you are relocating. How well it holds depends on how deep the tip can penetrate into the bottom. I had difficulty on one occasion remaining still in one spot where I had a combination of a hard river bottom and a strong wind. You probably want some details on how I built this, so let's show some close-ups. I used a half inch diameter fiberglass rod that is five feet long. I bought it from Granger's. The stainless steel tip cost me $9 and I used a two-part epoxy to secure it to the end. The half inch fiberglass rod is sufficient for a kayak, maybe even for a small john boat. My boat is pretty heavy for a kayak at 72 pounds before all of the added gear. That's close to the same weight of some small john boats. The arms themselves are just two pieces of one inch aluminum tubing that is 1 16th inch thick and four feet long. I bought it locally but you could purchase it online at places like onlinemetals.com. The base is made from a section of 1 8 inch by 1 and a half by 3 inch aluminum tube. I cut off one edge to make it into a U-channel. All bolts are 1024 stainless steel unless otherwise specified. They are secured with split washers and nuts. This angle shows the back side. A notch is cut out of the top to accommodate the braces in the stored position. This is looking inside the base showing how a couple of quarter inch bolts secure it to the kayak mount. This could just as easily mount to the transom of your john boat or to the back of your kayak. I made a wooden base that slides into a Minn Kota trolling motor bracket for my kayak. It works great, but I may streamline the design in the future. The upper unit is made from some 3 16th inch aluminum plate I had. 1 8th plate would have sufficed for a kayak. The block was also made from a thick piece of aluminum plate I had. This time it was 1 inch thick, the same thickness as the tubes. I drilled the hole for the fiberglass pole with my drill press. 
Here's a shot from the underside and from the back side. Make sure the end of your tube clears the back of the rod holder block when it is folded out. This shot is from the top with the fiberglass rod removed. Note that the screws do not go all the way through the rod. Instead, they just pinch it. I was concerned that a hole drilled all the way through such a small rod may weaken it too much. Here I show the rod pulled down out of the block. The two black marks on the rod are shallow dimples I drilled to receive the screw ends. In back of the upper unit is where the angled brace pole connects to the main mechanism. This location is best because it allows the most force to be transferred. If the brace is connected lower, it causes the main mechanism to flex. Here it is again from the top. Notice the inner sleeves. I was concerned that the forces at work would cause wear around the bolts, elongating the holes. These short sleeves distribute the load across more of the tube. These are just short screws, not bolts, that secure the inner sleeve to the outer tube and transfer the load. They are 90 degrees to the pivot bolts. Here is where the angled tube, the braces, and the handle all come together. The offset is required when the pole is fully deployed in deep water. The handle telescopes and a simple band clamp holds them tight. Having two layers of tubing on the handle also allows me to apply a good deal of force when shoving the anchor down into the river bottom. Here are some shots on how I built it. Here are the base dimensions. Here are the upper unit dimensions. The angle between the horizontal and the braces is the same as the arc traveled when the arms go from vertical to the fully deployed position. In my case, it was about 161 degrees. Working with aluminum is not hard. You can use regular woodworking tools. I cut the pieces on my table saw with a carbide tipped blade. I used a portable band saw to cut the angles, a standard drill press and drill bits for the holes, and a belt sander to smooth the edges. The tube end reinforcement sleeves I turned on my lathe from some smaller tube stock that was just slightly too wide to fit. Note that they're only about four inches long. And don't worry about adding these to your design. If you leave them off, just keep an eye on how much wear the bolt holes are getting. Here are some ideas to make it better. The whole assembly was a little awkward when removed from the kayak. I made the handle removable by replacing the nut and bolt with this clip. If you mount yours to a transom, consider making the whole unit easily removable for transportation. Holes can be drilled to remove some of the material to lighten it up. You can do the same to the base. I noticed after using the unit several times that the nuts were loosening to the point of falling off, even though they had split washers to prevent that. I'll have to change the washers or use some kind of thread locking compound to prevent this. You've seen the way I did it. But there are many changes you can make to the design and the materials used. I chose round aluminum tubing because I think it looks better. However, round tubing is not available in four foot lengths from your local big box store. You may want to use what is available locally. You could also use closet rod or thick dowels and paint them. Of course you'd have to prevent the ends from splitting by reinforcing with cross bolts or by wrapping them in metal in some way. My original thought was to use galvanized pipe, but it was too heavy. You might even want to try electrical conduit. It seems pretty thin though. PVC is too flexible in the smaller sizes, 
are too bulky and heavy in the bigger sizes. Here are some of my first sketches. They show how it would mount to a transom. Here's a shot of the wooden prototype I built to work out the details. Here are some alternate designs for the top. Curved braces would make it more attractive. You can use shallower angles and reinforce the connections with plates. Here I overlaid my drawing over a drawing from New Canoe's site. You can mount it on the bow or the stern depending on your craft and how you fish. You can add a lever handle up front, but a handle sticking up near your seat may get in the way. Here the handle is being held in place in two ways. A pin on the side of the handle would fit in a hole on the disc. And a spring-loaded handle end would apply constant pressure when the pole is locked in position. Passing under trees hanging in the river may be a problem. I have thought of hinging the base to allow the entire unit to be folded back. A latch on the front would release it and a rope would help pull it back up when you have passed under a tree. This is an old-fashioned drafting lamp. It has springs on the side of the arms to aid in lifting. I briefly considered incorporating springs into my unit. After using it for a while, I decided they were not necessary since the unit does not weigh that much. I hope this video inspires you to make your own. I look forward to seeing yours on the forums and here on YouTube.